Okay, so as I mentioned last week, I am sharing a presentation I did for an online summit all about the seven psychology tips to work smarter, not harder in your business. And so the first four tips I covered in last week's video. So if you haven't seen that, be sure to catch that. And now I'm diving right in. This is a psychology principle that I feel like more people should know about. And it is the difference between a fixed versus a growth mindset in terms of long-term sustainable success. So this is a concept that is from the book. It's called Mindset by Carol Dweck. And basically she states that there are two different types of mindsets. So there's the fixed mindset. And then there is the growth mindset. So the fixed mindset is somebody who is thinking about the way that they approach business per se, as they are very quick to avoid challenges. They feel that what the way that they are is a, a fixed thing and that it's hard to change that. And so it's really hard for them to take criticism or take feedback. It's hard to overcome challenges. Like I mentioned, they're super focused on proving themselves and they can sometimes feel like a lot of comparison and because of they feel like they are not equipped to do whatever it is they see somebody else doing but they really want for themselves and so that's a little bit of what it looks like with a fixed mindset versus when you approach business with a growth mindset you find that it is so much easier it takes so much pressure off of things it allows you to keep continually growing and start to see challenges as places for opportunity there are places for feedback it helps you really evaluate your business as a whole from a very almost like scientific or more like playful perspective which takes some of like the wrapping our work and our worth away from things it's easier for you to be inspired by others people's success because your brain is like oh they can do it that means that it's like a proven thing. And that means that I can learn how to do it too. They started at where I am. And so that's just a really good indicator that is possible for me. I can learn the little steps and make the little shifts and tweaks along the way in order for that to become the way that I get to run my business too. So that's a little bit of what a fixed versus a growth mindset is. So I really want to challenge you to think about which one are you operating out of primarily when it comes to running your business. Are you operating out of a fixed mindset? And what would that look like to shift and try to start to run things out of a growth mindset? Or if you're operating out of a growth mindset, that's amazing. What are some of the places that you could take this and just take it to the next level? Is there anything that you like any skills that you need to refine, tweak, any like new project or venture that feels a little bit out of your comfort zone, but that you know would be good for you? Can you step into that next? <clears throat> so Again, kind of going from this idea of being in a fixed mindset to operating out of a growth mindset, I really want to talk about shifting from feeling like continually the employee and the worker be in your business to also taking the time to shift into I am the CEO and I am the business owner because that can be so important to our business growth as photographers. And so the way that we do that is like I mentioned, take some time to really, you know, if you're wearing all of the hats Take some time to put that CEO, like strategic thinker, the person who like is looking at the business as a whole with a very like neutral perspective, taking that bird's eye view of your business. So a few ways to do that is to, you know, take that time during those quarterly CEO days, take the time to reflect on the past quarter, um, figure out what needs to be tweaked or shifted to, and changed for the better, and then plan out your upcoming quarter of not just what client work do I have, but also what would be some good business projects or where can I kind of step out of my comfort zone in order to grow? What are those growth opportunities that I could have if you were taking and adopting your growth mindset? Um, and so I really want you to think about making decisions from the data, not the drama. So a lot of times we'll feel a certain way about our business, depending on what has happened, like over the last two to three days. But for this, I really want you to take a bird's eye view. And instead of being like, oh, like I haven't had the last two people book with me, like something must be wrong with the entire process. I want you to really start looking at every single part of the, like of your whole business and of the process and look. From a data perspective, look at your in, like analytics, look at your insights, look at what the numbers are telling you because they can often give you a really clear picture and show you where the gap might be that you can focus um, on fixing like one specific gap rather than being like, oh, none of this works, right? Because 
I mean, I'm the first and the first to be guilty of being like, it's not working. But then if you really sit down and look at it, first, give yourself credit for all the parts that are working. And that will help you really start to figure out, oh, there's actually a gap between like people are reaching out to me, but then I'm getting ghosted. So I know to focus on that one specific part of my business, right? So again, that's how you can start to make decisions out of like the data instead of the drama. Okay. And another thing that I want you to start thinking about is every single week, I want you to step into that CEO role instead of just the employee or the executor or the worker bee that's like just getting task after task done. I want you to at least once a week start to think about what does the business need from me today as the business owner? So what are those things that are maybe important but not urgent? And can I start to take just a little bit of action towards those because those are the things that are going to propel you towards that business growth that you're really looking for. Okay, so homework for this is to list out all the hats that you wear in your business. Start to really think about what are only the things that you can do. What are the things that are like that 20% that's actually bringing in the results? And are you making your decisions from your data and what your business is actually telling you as opposed to what you hear everyone else telling you that you quote unquote should be doing to grow your business? Um, and, and once you start to get to the point where you have a lot on your plate and you're using all of these trips and tricks, but you're still maxed out at capacity, start to think about what are things that you can start to hand off or delegate or outsource or even automate to a software or something like that. So that you're freeing up more of your time, not only to serve your clients really well, but to also show up as that CEO, who's like taking that business to the next level. Okay. So one of the few last things I want to leave you with is with all of this, with anything that you're doing in your business, especially if it's your first time or if it's something that you hit pause instead of actually sharing the post or sharing about the set many sessions that you have coming up, I want you to always tell yourself, always remind yourself, progress over perfection. I would rather you get something out there in the world that's 80% complete and then go back and tweak and refine the 20% with the feedback that you get. But if you never put something out there, if you never try something, if you never get out of your comfort zone, it's really hard to figure out what to actually shift and tweak because you're trying to make it perfect in your head, but it's always going to be perceived and received in different ways based off of like your different clients and the way that they view things and their buyer psychology, right? So Make sure that you are making the progress, even if it looks messy and imperfect, that is so much better than trying to like aim for perfection, but not get your work out there. Okay, so the last thing that I'm going to leave you with is the power of celebrating small wins along the way. I think it's so easy for us to feel like, oh, we'll feel successful or we can like rest and relax once we've hit X like milestone in our business and we like keep pushing ourselves and working so hard and then we delay the gratification and that actually leads to burnout and so instead I really want you to start to give yourself like give yourself credit along the way as you're showing up start to celebrate the really small wins because every single small win that you have every single like 15 minute task that you check off is going to be a little hit of dopamine for your brain and then your brain's gonna be like oh I'm gonna do that again because it felt good but if you're like delaying that oh I like did a great job until the very end then you're like making the process feel so much harder than it could and it's gonna be way less likely that your brain is going to want to repeat that process because it didn't feel as good along the journey. So it's like, how can we start to really love the journey as much as the end result? So like I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, I want you to write down three to five action items that you are going to either underline or start in your notes that you want to start to implement in your business within the next month. I want you to block time off on your actual calendar to execute and implement those things. I really recommend adding in your CEO quarterly days on your calendar when you go to block off this time for your tasks as well. And then I want you to put a little reminder on your phone that goes off every single Friday to celebrate your wins from the week and think of two to three like business CEO level tasks, things that are maybe important but not urgent that you want to complete the upcoming week in order to move your business forward as the CEO and not just the employee of your business. Okay. That was a lot to get through. I tried to go through it as fast as humanly possible, but I know that was a lot. If you have any questions on any of it, 
please don't hesitate to reach out to me online. I'm at Manali Sontake on Instagram. And then that is my website and my email. And I would be more than happy to answer any like one-on-one questions that you guys have. If you are like, how do I apply this to my specific business? I love workshop workshopping that stuff with you guys. And I do that in a very like structured way in my one-on-one business coaching. But if you have any like questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. I hope that this was helpful and I hope that it gave you a couple of perspective shifts. And now you're armed with all of the psychology knowledge to work harder or work smarter, not harder in your business.